A recent Toastmasters area competition winner, a life coach, a visual artist, an entrepreneur with over eight years as an adult educator, and 15 years developing her conscious wellness practice, Mandara supports her life coaching, life coaching, fine art, and video production clients by applying her superpower, the intuition, to everything she does. Mandara believes that the majority of our problems can be solved by taking a moment to appreciate a great work of art, share an inspiring story, connect to the present moment, or just dance it out. She's with us today to teach on how to connect with our higher selves apply mindful tools backed by science in support of personal and professional growth, as well as share her experiential wisdom on how she successfully healed herself from two reconstructive spinal surgeries and a lifetime of chronic pain. An avid yogi and wellness junkie with a gift for medical mediumship, it is no wonder Mandara's name aptly means tree under whose shade all cares are forgotten. Please help me welcome Mandara leading our current workshop. Mandara? So thank you so much. Thank you, Mimi, for that beautiful introduction. I am going to share my screen. And as I do, I am going to share a little bit about myself as well. Oh. Everyone see me okay? See my slides okay? Give me a thumbs up. We're going to do some thumbs up work here today. All right. I'm going to get those thumbs working, connect to our bodies, mind-body connection. So a little bit about me. As Mimi said, I did recently, I, I won an area competition for the international competition Toastmasters this year. And I started with a little bit about me and here it goes. When I was 13 years old, I was told I might never walk again. And by the age of 15 years old, I had had two reconstructive, reconstructive spinal surgeries, which left me traumatized in chronic pain for over 20, almost 30 years. I had to quit numerous jobs, restart university numerous times in order to rest and recover. I raised my two-year-old daughter with a back brace and a walker. Needless to say, I spent thousands of dollars and thousands of hours trying to heal myself by going to other healers. And although healers give you brilliant insight and they can help you, after all that running around outside myself for answers, can you guess what finally helped me fully begin to heal? And maybe some of you can have experienced this as well yourself. The only way to heal is to first go inside for answers. In doing so, I discovered through a meditation practice that I could connect to my own inner wisdom and my higher conscious wisdom, which I'm going to share how to do throughout this workshop. In doing this work, and healing myself, it enabled me to become the leader I am today. Without first healing myself, I couldn't go out and help other people. I spent years recovering, but by th after three years of daily conscious practice, I straightened my spine. I'm actually one inch taller than I was when I was in my 20s. I ended up running a theater for the, for the community. I worked for the school district with only an art degree, but my higher conscious practice to guide me, I ended up becoming a manager for the school district and I ran a vocational school for adults for over 3000 students. And today I have my own media company. I'm an artist, a wellness coach, and I get to help people find it within themselves to heal and become the leaders I know they can become. So, how exactly did I heal myself and turn my life around? In today's workshop, I'll take you through what might be some, for some of you, a first glimpse into higher consciousness. We're gonna be hands-on today. We're gonna to get to do a meditation. So for those of you who've shown up today, you're gonna to get to rest and recover and replenish. I'm gonna be filling you with positive energy today and you're gonna learn how to do this yourself. We're gonna walk through the seven principles for accessing higher consciousness. That's part of the meditation. And we're going to look at how, as leaders, we can apply each one of those principles. I want you to stay to the end of the workshop. Now, because we only have a handful of people here today that are guests, uh, or possibly fellow Toastmasters, we're going to find out in a moment. Um, you, if you stay till the end of the workshop, you are all going to be winners today. <laughs> I was going to give a prize draw to two lucky winners, but I'm going to give you three. Um, how many of you got two guests? 
we've got three. Well, whatever, I'll do y'all. We'll do everybody gets a free reading. <laughs> Why not, right? Share the love. Because what I want to show you is that when we do higher conscious practice work, I've been doing this for over 11 years, 15 years in total, but my full healing began 11 years ago. And this practice goes way farther down the rabbit hole. At first, you're connecting to your own higher self, but in time, you, you can connect to other people's higher selves. So this is what I do with my wellness practice. Um, if you're interested, you'll be able to email me and I can help you set up a reading. So before we dive in a little further, I would like everyone to give me the thumbs up, thumbs down technique. So for this technique, we're gonna do a rapid fire question. I just wanna see who you guys are here today. Um, you can give me thumbs up. We could do a round robin because there's so few of us today, but you know what, let's just try this. So the thumbs up, thumbs down technique, it's a polling system. So obviously thumbs up, thumbs down, but what's nice about this is there's a neutral and there's like a little bit, you know, you can, you can be anywhere you want in neutral because sometimes we're not black or white, we're everything in between, okay? So first question, how long have you been a Toastmaster? I'm gonna give you some examples. So less than one year, anybody here really brand new? No? Okay. One to five years. Okay. So one to, so no. So one to five years. That's me. Okay. Some really like veteran Toastmaster, five to 10 years. Nice. Five to 10 years and 10 plus years. Woohoo. Look at you guys go. I love it. We're actually quite like equal here. This is really great. We've got a bit of everybody. So has anyone here worked in the health and wellness industry before? Obviously me, anybody? No, yes, okay. What about in the arts? Obviously my thumb's staying up for all this stuff. Yes, okay. What about in science and tech? Science or tech, yeah, okay, nice. And business and finance. <laughs> What's funny about doing the, the thumbs down on someone's like, no, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> real estate, real estate, no real estate, no, okay. And any entrepreneurs here? Okay. And last question here, is anyone retired? Nice, got a retiree, nice. <laughs> a little bit, a little, okay. So do you consider yourself a leader? Two thumbs up. Do you consider yourself a leader or a little bit in between? We've got leaders here today, awesome. And rate your interest in spirituality. So anything to do with metaphysics, quantum science, meditation. So obviously, if you're really into it, if you're kind of here, and if you're on the fence. Okay, so we've got some on the fence, and we've got some yesers. And I believe, okay, and last, last, you know, couple questions, higher self. So have you heard of higher consciousness or higher self or higher mind before? Yeah, okay, great. And how often do you do a spiritual practice? So this isn't a how often, this is like, how adept are you at it? Do you do it all the time? Yes? Yeah, okay, all right. So some in between. Well, I hope to inspire you a little bit today. Um, and the first thing I want everyone to do today is we're gonna set our intention. So we're set, setting intention is you're gonna, we're gonna talk about it constantly throughout this workshop. And it's the most important thing. So I want, so just to give you an example of my intention today, my intention for this workshop as a fellow Toastmaster and a self-growth junkie is to hold space for and facilitate mutual learning, self-growth and empowerment as leaders. This is a mutual experience. I'm growing, you're growing, we're growing together. So I would like everyone to type in the chat because writing is even more powerful commitment. Can you please write in the chat what your intention is for being on this workshop today? It could totally be to just get the job done. Whatever it is, I am open. It's just be honest. Learn more on how to be a better leader. Absolutely. Thank you, Giuseppe. Learn about leadership, a new form of leadership maybe inspiration and learning, awesome, thank you. Anyone else, we'll, we'll move on and we'll get, oh, I'm happy to relax and remove my tiredness. Maybe you're going to get some energy today. Yep, you will on this meditation. 
And last, my intention is to expand my understanding of meditation, to use it as a strength to help others around me. Thank you. That's so well said, because when we do this work, that's exactly what we do. We help others around us. So higher self, higher consciousness, what is it, higher mind? Well, they're all the same, the different terms for the same thing. And I love this quote, higher self is the inseparable ray of the universe and oneself. And we're going to understand that better through our meditation. Higher self is the loving, wise, all-knowing, authentic self without any attachment to one's earthly identity. It is also our birthright. It's really important to understand that it's about being authentic. Has anyone heard of this guy, Dr. Joe Dispenza? Yes? Some thumbs up? Okay. So you know him, you love him, you understand. So I'm going to be quoting him a lot in this workshop because he's brilliant. And because when I started to do this work 15 years ago, but by the time I was healing myself, I didn't follow anybody. I did it all instinctively on my own. And then when I, I had seen the secret though, I'd seen him on the secret. I saw him on a couple things and, and then his work came back to me after I'd already learned to do it. It's more important in this life sometimes to do it for yourself and then learn more about it. And then you get even more into it. And I, it was so lovely to have someone who could explain to me what it was I was doing instinctively. So the quantum field, what is it? It's an invisible field of energy and information, or you could say a field of intelligence or consciousness itself that exists beyond space and time. Nothing physical or material exists here. So higher consciousness is the part of our mind which connects us to the invisible quantum field or infinite potential energy outside time and space. We're going to talk more about the quantum field, but understand that scientific research into consciousness, you probably all know this already, but it's very new. It's in its infancy. So thank God for Dr. Dispenza so we can get going on this work. And we've got to become comfortable in this work with the uncomfortableness of the invisible world. That's just the way it is. Just like trusting gravity exists, air exists, electricity. We've come to, we have to come to understand that consciousness absolutely exists. So Dr. Dispenza, you know his work, so I won't go too much into him, but he's created an institution, an institute uh, where he does scientific um, explorations into consciousness and how people like myself have healed themselves miraculously by doing this work. So for me, this practice is life-changing, life-saving, and believe it or not, fun. Meditation can feel like, oh, it's a bit, I got to go do it. But the truth about it is, is that once you do it, like, you know, you feel elated and amazing. And today you're going to get that. So congratulations for showing up here today because you guys are going to get some love today. And on a deeper note, I want to say that as just as Dr. Dispenza and I we both think that as every person awakens through doing this daily practice or whenever they can manage this practice, we're going to awaken as a society and as the leaders we are born to be. We are going to awaken, become conscious. We're going to lead with greater empathy, love, and self-awareness, and together we'll positively impact and shift the planet. And it is so needed now more than ever, right? Like, seriously, <laughs> we need some help. So I want you to know that because this is an authentic practice, I want you to come to learn your own word for higher self, for higher consciousness. I am, this is a safe place and an inclusive space. This work is exactly about finding your own authenticity. So if for you, higher self, higher consciousness isn't quite your word, maybe it's source or God or universal wisdom or just self-awareness. I want that to be, no, that's okay for you. I don't want you to have to agree with everything I'm saying here but I hope you walk away with, with um, a, chain, a slight change in consciousness and a feeling and an opening. So you'll hear me say it again and again, there's no one way to do things and there's no one way to do things for all, right? We are all unique and already have within us the necessary tools to tackle the unique challenges we are given. We just need to become conscious of the tools we possess, adapt them and invent new ones as needed. What matters most is from what part of our being we access and create these tools. We are all given, I'm going to say that again, a unique set of life happenings. You know, we're all given a set of unique challenges in life, but we're also given the unique tools to, to deal with them. And I know that somewhere that might even sound like a cliche, but this work is, this is what the work's about, is finding your unique tools. So how do you do that? Can you go to a book? Do you go to a class? You, you can get help. 
But until you do the work yourself and until you discover your own voice, higher consciousness feeding you your wisdom, the right way to move, dress, spend money, what job to be in, it all comes from us and it's all unique. So the thinking mind versus the higher conscious mind. So on the one side, when we look at three-dimensional reality, like earth space, right? Earth thinking mind, we're an ego conditioned responses and we're paying attention to the external and our higher conscious mind, we're beyond space and time and we're in the infinite potential where we can create there, right? So Joe Spence has this to say about it. When we connect to the quantum field, that place where all new potential exists as possibility not yet materialized in three-dimensional reality, our nervous system becomes like an antenna or a superconductor whose job it is to pull more highly organized, coherent energy and information, consciousness into the field and into our biology. In order to connect to that energy and information, I'll just say above here, we have to change our consciousness to match its consciousness. So we have to raise our vibrations to be able to directly get fed information. This is what meditation is about. And I'm going to show you today more than one way to raise your consciousness. We don't always have time for meditation. I'm going to show you some other hacks, as they say. So often people get lose faith or get impatient and discouraged, Joe Dispenza says, because of this. He says, we do this by taking, so we, so remember that consciousness is awareness and awareness is paying attention. We do this by taking our attention off of everything material in the three-dimensional reality and putting it in the unified quantum field. This is, of course, requires us to put our attention on something invisible, something we can't experience with our senses. This is where many people lose faith, get impatient, and get discouraged. And what we're going to practice today is that if we can see it in our minds, and as leaders, we need to do this, if we can see it in our minds, we can create it. All right? If we can, we can connect it'll manifest. It's, it's actually a law, a quantum law. All right. So I want to go just explain a little bit more about your nervous system. This was really important. And I tried to read it slowly. So you understand this. I actually learned something new while doing this research. I didn't understand when I was doing my yoga practice that this was happening, but Joe Dispenza has helped me figure it out. So what does the, our nervous system do for us in terms of our biology? The nervous system is a complex collection of nerves and specialized cells known as neurons that transmit signals between different parts of the body. It is essentially the body's electrical wiring. Structurally, the nervous system has two components, the nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. But here's what's really important, and I'll explain why in a moment. The four main functions of the nervous system are it controls the body's internal environment to maintain homeostasis. An example of this is when we regulate body temperature. It programs our spinal cord reflexes, which allows us to stretch. It controls memory and learning and voluntary movement. So this is what's interesting. Now I know this is my story, but as we do the work today, it will become your story because you're gonna see how this is happening. Okay, you're gonna start to blend the thinking mind with the quantum mind and the higher self. And we're gonna put it together. But basically when I was doing my yoga practice every day, my meditation, I didn't move unless my higher self until I intuited exactly how to move. I didn't follow any instructional yoga videos. I did it all on my own. Because every time I did it through yoga videos, I would hurt myself. So this is how it works. The nervous system is actually connecting and so here, go back to here. So the programming of spinal cord reflexes is my nervous system. My nervous system is what was getting the information. So my higher conscious self is sending it, this information to my nervous system. And that's why if you're calm and centered, that's why we get that way in meditation, your nervous system can like open itself. If you're on computers and you're busy with life and things, you're over distracted, your nervous system can't process the natural innate wisdom and information that our higher being is trying to give us. So in my case, it went right to my spinal column. So if you're having, if any of you here today are having any physical issues, I can, I'm an example of th that this works. And I got, I got better month after month. It may have taken me a few years to fully recover, but I was recovering 
30 years of chronic pain. So in three years, not too bad, right? But it works for mental health, it works for everything. Our nervous system controls all of that. So today we're gonna pull our minds out of our bodies. That's literally what we're gonna be doing. And I want you to imagine when we do this, we're gonna do this in a moment in the meditation. We're gonna pull our minds out of our body. So where does it go? It's going into the, it's just relaxing over here in the quantum field, right? We're pulling our thinking mind out of our body so that our higher consciousness can access our nervous system and give us, give us information right to our bodies. So when we imagine pulling our mind out of our body, it's gonna be kind of floating in a nice little protective safe bubble. Nothing, nothing bad happens to it. It's just pulling it out and giving a little break. So if you want something you've never done before, you're going to have to do something you've never done before to get it. Did I say that right? If you want something you have never had before, you're going to have to do something you've never done before to get it. Thomas Jefferson said that. And what exactly that something is, is maybe something that currently is outside your conscious mind. And the meditation is gonna help starting to bring that in. And I love this one by Albert Einstein who believed in higher consciousness as well. You cannot solve a problem on the same level as the problem itself. We've heard, that, we've heard that line a million times, but what I'm trying to show you here today, just exactly what he meant. That guy was receiving information from where, right? He was brilliant and a lot of, and where was he receiving? Where do all of the great artists and thinker, you know, philosophers and, and poets, where does that come from? That's what we're gonna work on today. And as leaders, we need that. So I want you to stay open in this work to the how whatever we want shows up in our lives and whatever form it comes in. So we're not in control of the how. We are co-creating with our higher self. We are meeting our higher self. Some say the universe, God, however you think about this, we're meeting them halfway. So for example, as a leader, you may be working with the finance team and pitching that your project is worth investing 100K into. So with all your might, you pitch that 100K, you're gonna get 100K and they reject you. Do you stay open? You stay within your conscious practice. You do it daily. You're visualizing, you're imagining getting this money. And lo and behold, a grant opportunity comes up for 105K and you lend it. So we never know exactly how it's going to show up. And a good tip I like to always say, like this, <laughs> is you ask for whatever you want. I want a new car. I want that new relationship. I want to be a better leader and you say this or even better, because we're, we can attract so much more than we, can, than we can imagine. But I'd like to say if we can imagine it, then we can attract it. All right, so what is higher conscious leadership? If you're here today, you are called to lead and all of you said you're leaders. So perhaps a business is what you lead, a school PAC meeting, maybe a revolution is something you wanna lead. You wanna lead with ideas, write a book, make a difference. And as Toastmasters, of course, we wanna give impactful speeches. So higher conscious leaders practice connecting to their higher consciousness in order to integrate the highest possible vision and outcome for all. And you can see here what, they, what we lead with. Higher wisdom, self-awareness, heart, confidence, trust, gratitude. These words we hear all the time, but practicing it and really feeling and experiencing it is a whole other matter. And it's really important to know that we take responsibility for our actions and how they affect others and the planet, understanding that we are all connected. It's a holistic view. So believing is seeing. I want you to put aside any disbelief you might be experiencing at this point from what I've shared and imagine what if it were true that higher consciousness not only exists, it has the power to show us as leaders a way forward with more efficiency, greater joy and ease. It helps empower our decisions, actions, so we have more confidence, connection, and greater capacity to calculate risk, which is a part of leadership. And all of this will lead us in turn, lead us. As we lead others, it'll lead us in turn to better health, better relationships, financial abundance, and more. 100% believe this work. And so I want everyone to give me the thumbs up that you, you hear me and that you're willing to give this a chance today and that you can do this, all right? Can you get a thumbs up? Yeah. Because if I can do it, if I can transform 
myself from being a person bedridden half her life in chronic pain, raising her daughter with a walker, <laughs> to a wellness coach who educates others on now on how to, how to heal, then you too can achieve whatever it is your soul is calling you to achieve. I would like to take one moment, however, and acknowledge, recognize my privilege here. I recognize that we, might, we may not all identify as having equal opportunities or having had equal support systems in one's life to be able to do this work in the past, maybe not even now. So mindful of this, I'm committed to supporting and facilitating everyone's healing journey and hope with all my heart this information is helpful to you. All right, time for an activity. Does everybody have a piece of paper and a pen? Thumbs up, something, pencil, pen, something? Okay, so I'd like everyone to grab a pen and paper and answer these four questions. I'll go slowly, but they are written here on the screen if you wanna go a little faster. So what area of your life, <clears throat> if at all, is desperately in need of some love or divine intervention? So what area, your work, keep it simple, your love life, your health, and what challenge are you facing in that area? We're gonna come back to these questions in a little bit. And what would you like to achieve? A heart-centered goal. All right. And finally, I'd like you to ask yourself, <clears throat> put it in a question form, kind of like what you would ask your higher self. The example I have is, should I buy a new car right now? But what question in relationship to what you're working on is your question? We're going to come back to these questions and statements a little bit later in the workshop. For now, I want you to keep them in mind and in your heart throughout the workshop because an answer may come through at any point during this, during our time together. We will be raising our vibrations today and your higher conscious may say hello. If it doesn't, no stress. Let go of any doubts or disappointment. This is only a beginning. I am showing you the door, as they say. You will be presented with many opportunities to walk through it today and throughout the rest of your lifetime if you commit to practicing this work. So today we're going to open ourselves to the seven key principles for connecting to higher self. We're also gonna be looking at the mind-body connection. And most importantly today, if we can manage this, this is the best thing ever. We can create space within. I want you to feel what that feels like today. That is our goal, because then you'll know what to get back to and get recentered with. So here are the seven key principles. Setting your attention, Breathing, visualization with energetic grounding and light, trust, have gratitude, forgive, and never assume. That's a big one. So for many of you, these seven principles are nothing new on their own. I get that. They are, in fact, tried and true principles for a reason. They're universal. They're practiced throughout history and just about every major religion and faith. However, when practiced in the way I'm going to show you today and for the reasons I'm going to highlight, my hope is that you will come to be inspired perhaps learn something new and see how powerful and effective they are, always practice within this combination, all right? These are simple but profound truths and please don't, <laughs> please don't confuse them with easy. So the first three are fun and the other four will free you, but they take work and fun work, <laughs> grounding work. Okay, so just in, we're going to meditate in about one minute, and I'm just going to share with you before we meditate. I want you to think about, I want to educate you about how do you know if you're communicating with your higher self? How do you know that? Has anyone here with just a shake of the head, has anyone ever felt they've connected with their higher consciousness before? Yeah? Yes? Sure, good, awesome. So you guys have, yes, yeah, right? It's like, yes, 
But what do we always do? We doubt ourselves. And what part of our being doubts ourselves? The thinking mind. I still do it to this day. I mean, 100% know I healed myself this way. But with my daily life, I suddenly go, oh, I don't need to listen to that little voice that's trying to help me. Nah, it's not going to rain today. Or I don't need that. Uh, that. That guy, I can trust him. Sure, I can. Yeah. That was all because of desire. I wanted something. I willed it. But was I listening? So what does higher self feel like and sound like when we're meditating? So you may feel a lightness of being. Your spine and breathing begins to feel easy when we start connecting. We feel warmth maybe in our heart chakra area. I'm not going to go into chakras today, but it's this area of the chest. You may hear a gentle, loving voice, but it's important to note that it's spoken in your own head voice. It feels like a guiding, understanding, compassionate, wise presence. You may spontaneously have strong emotions that arise, which you become ready to release. You intuitively understand that these emotions or what these emotions pertain to, which is really key. You start to get a glimpse of feeling and intuitive understanding. You may feel a connection or oneness with the universe, God, source, and you may laugh like you're suddenly getting an inside joke between you and the universe. That happens to me all the time. So our intention right now for the next 10 minutes is only to create and feel space within our beings. Nothing more is needed. Let whatever is meant to be, be. If any other experiences come, wonderful. Allow them to present themselves, pass through you, release them and come back to your focusing breath. I see many of you here have meditated before, so that won't be anything new. Every moment, however, in life is unique. This moment we're in is precious, and it, there's a reason we're here right now. So there's nowhere else we have to be. So if everyone can, I'm going to get set up for the meditation. I'd like you to as well. So if you're comfy in the chair, you're in great. If you need a pillow, great. Again, it's only 10 minutes but I want you to be as comfortable as possible. So just give me a thumbs up if you feel ready. Often we like to tilt um, the base of our spine a little bit um, down, shift it like, you know, with a pillow to give your back some space to sit straight. Feet on the floor, please. So just again, this is what higher self feels like, right? We're paying attention to some of these things today. All right. Okay. In just a moment, I'm going to have some light music coming on. Let's see if you can hear this. You give me a thumbs up if you can hear this. Can you hear the music? Can you hear the music now? It should kick in. Yes? Awesome. All right, I want everybody just for the moment, I want you to put your hands over your eyes like this and take three big deep breaths in and out. In through our nose, out through our mouth. And again. into your nose and as you're breathing in you're filling your body up with positive energy and when you exhale let go of any toxic energy and you can release your hands as you want to and keep breathing with your eyes closed good we're now going to set our intention connect with our higher self for healing. So go ahead and do this in your mind and repeat after me silently. I set my intention to connect with my higher self for healing. I set my intention to pull my thinking mind out of my body just for the time being. I am open to receiving intuitive guidance for my highest good.
I am creating space within. Awesome job. Remaining breathing with your eyes closed, we're gonna go sink a little deeper. With every inhale, we're going to breathe in one long breath, in from the bottom of our belly, <clears throat> through our chest to the top of our head, and we're gonna hold before exhaling fully and pushing our minds out of our body. When you are ready, inhale, fill your belly and chest right to the top of your head, hold, Exhale out your mouth, push your thinking mind out fully. Inhale from your belly right through the top of your head and hold. Exhale, pulling in your abdomen, getting the last bit of air out. Keep going at your own pace. Really see yourself pulling your mind out of your body. Connecting to space within. And now allow your breathing to become easy, even easier, in and out. As you're breathing, I want you to imagine a dazzling orb of radiant, loving white light 500 feet above your head in the sky, radiating sparkling light from a giant sun. Now imagine a trap door right above the crown of your head, which you open to allow the light to enter your being. And have a sense of this beautiful light warming and soothing you as it radiates down from your crown through your spinal column, filling you with the most beautiful, sparkling, healing light. Allow this light to funnel healing energy through to every cell of your being with every inhale. And with every exhale, let go of any pain, negativity, or toxic energy you may have near or on you. Keep drawing the light into your being and as you do, give love and thanks back to this light. This light is your higher self and the loving source of all that is. Have a sense of your higher self receiving your gratitude and in return, showering you with even more loving, radiant light. You are now overflowing with beautiful healing light. Now imagine this radiant white light flowing through your being and out through the base of your spine to the core of the earth. As this light reaches the earth's center, have a sense of the light grounding and anchoring you to the healing energy of the earth. The earth supports you, feeds you, shelters you. Give thanks to the earth for this loving, supportive energy. Feel the earth receive your gratitude, and in return, this light bounces back to you, filling you with even more abundance. Have a sense of the infinite light loop, now forming as light radiates from above, through your spine to the earth's core and back again. Feel it. Know that you are safe, loved, fully supported by your higher energy. And trust that there is nowhere else you need to be but here. Recall any experience from earlier today just briefly, do not attach. But any experiences today or over this past week where you may have left, unwittingly left, your energy. Perhaps with someone or something you were resisting. I want you to take it back. Visualize your energy as being a favorite color made of light. 
have a sense of any energy you may have left behind and draw this colorful light from them and the situation back into your being. See it leave any person or situation you may have left it with and see it instantly magically flow straight back into you. Good, you're doing a great job. And as you do this, as you bring this loving light back into your being, forgive yourself for leaving any of this energy behind. Your energy is flowing back to you. Allow yourself now to forgive whoever may have knowingly or unknowingly held on to your energy. And as you do this, have a sense of becoming more energized and more spacious within as you let go of any limiting negative attachments that had been draining your energy until now. You now have all your energy back in its entirety. Allow any distracting thoughts to pass through you. Breathe them out, creating even more space within. You're doing great work. We're gonna go deeper into gratitude. I want you to focus your attention now on something in your life which you are very, very grateful for. Perhaps a person or a pet in your life you love, a beloved object or an activity you love to do. See it in your mind. Notice a sense of warmth in your being as you recall that which you are grateful for. Trust and know that you are being sent energy, love, and gratitude in return for the loving energy you are emitting. Now we're going to take this moment to send everyone here on this workshop love and gratitude. So focus and visualize sending white light from the radiant source of light in the sky through your being to everyone here in this workshop today. I'm doing it too. Have a sense of it permeating everyone's being. Yeah, beautiful. You guys are good at this. Feel the gratitude and love coming back to you from everyone as they receive it. This energy of loving gratitude is very, very powerful and transformative. Have a sense of this with all your being. Continue to breathe and feel the radiating energy and immense space we've created within. And letting go of any assumptions, trust and any loving messages or wisdom, or just enjoy the space you feel over this next moment of silence. Excellent job. So coming back into awareness, you have successfully opened, successfully opened the gateway to higher consciousness. 
Stay here for a few breaths more and I will begin to bring you out of the meditation. I will count you backwards from five to one. Five, begin to sense the sounds and presence of the room around you. Four, sense your body, wiggle your toes. Three, you are feeling renewed and refreshed. Two, you are a powerful leader supported by your higher consciousness in all that you do and all that you are, just as you are. And one, when you are ready, open your eyes. So how do you feel? You could unmute yourself for a moment and just tell me how you feel. We're, we're, we're a small group here. Great. Great. So it's not always easy to connect right in the moment, especially on these workshop calls and we're, we're surrounded by technology, but how did this start to feel? I know many of you meditate on your own, it looks like. Did you start to feel a sense of any space? A little bit? Yes. Yes. Yes? Excellent. That's great. A little more relaxed, relaxed. Not, not rushed. Yeah. Great. And this meditation is something that I did right now over 10 minutes. But obviously, for many of you meditate, the important part is that silence. I, we did one minute today because I wanted to explain to you how I visualize and what I see and how I connect this forgiveness, gratitude, breath together. But it's that space we create from that point on, that's where the work is done, right? So we only did one minute of silence, but of course I wanna challenge you if you don't already do it already to give yourself 10 minutes of silence and then go from there. Eventually 20 minutes a day is really beautiful. Any more than that is a luxury, but it's worthwhile. It's where I did my most profound healing, sitting in that space and really feeling that forgiveness and gratitude a little longer really holding it and then feeling the rush of emotions that come through because they can come through, right? And that's where the healing happens. So I'm gonna put up my email again later, but if you'd like to send me, if you would like um, me to send you a copy of this meditation, I can do that. And if you email me, I'll do that. But of course it's on this Zoom call that's being recorded. So you are not who you think you are you are the space where thoughts arise. You have may, maybe begun to feel a real sense of energy and calmness today, hopefully a sense of space within started. Life shows us this pattern of needing space for long-term health again and again. So for example, when we need, we need to continually clean our house, dust empty drawers, make room in cupboards for the people and new relationships we have in our life, we have to also empty space within to begin new relationships, new jobs, new projects. We're repeatedly having to create space within. In order to thrive, such as building a successful company or healing from a degenerative disease, we first need to clean house to create space to do this work. So what is the mind-body connection? Because that is what we were doing today. And by mind, when we do meditation, of course, I mean not your thinking mind, but a higher conscious mind connecting through our nervous systems into our bodies. So the body has intelligence. The body never forgets. A big part of what helped me and heal my body through my meditation practice was that even though I had met these healers and worked with these osteopaths, chiros, I'm not into chiros, but to each their own. I loved osteopaths, Reiki, physios. Even though I'd done it 20 years earlier, when I was in med my meditation practice, my body actually recalled, my intuitive knowing recalled moves, postures, stretches they gave me, but things they were doing, they didn't even tell me they were doing, they were just working on me. My body suddenly remembered those movements and knew how to align me, my, align me and give me the right, ex the exact right poses to do. My thinking mind couldn't have done this. 20, 30 years of seeing healers as if I could recall that. 
This was happening instinctively. It was happening exactly as it needed to. So not only did my higher knowing um, put my body in these better positions, but each, each time it put me in a position, it was different every session. So it's not like it kept putting me in the same positions. And by I mean it, I'm saying higher consciousness. My experience of higher consciousness was an intuitive sense of how I should move. Okay, so it's in the same way that the body knows what it wants to eat. We can block this out all we want, but the truth is, is we know that food didn't feel right, that food, you know, what, what we're being told, right? So perhaps you notice you've begun to get, okay, so this is what I want to talk about, the signs of the body. So when, the, our, when, when our mind-body connection is happening, maybe you felt this before. An example is you, you're, getting to, you're getting ready to go to work. Now it's getting on a Zoom call, but back in the day, it was going to the office, wherever you're headed. And every time you go to do this one thing, you get a stomach ache before you do it. And then when you're doing the thing, you get a headache while you're doing it. You get the idea. And then when you come home and you're relaxing, you're watching TV, you find yourself biting your nails. Why are you doing that? Where is this nervous energy coming from, right? Where are these symptoms coming from? So they start as small, uncomfortable symptoms, but of course they build up over time and become a can become something very impactful. So what is your body trying to tell you? So I want you to write these three questions down if you don't already know them, or you can look back at this Zoom chat later. The next time you have a body feeling, a sensation, maybe you're even having it now, I want you to think about these three questions. Anything you feel in your body, what event was going on in my life when my body issue first started to occur? What event? Maybe you were getting married. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a loved one. Number two, what thought was I having when I felt my body issue start to occur? And of course, what feeling or emotion, feeling or emotion was I experiencing when the body issue first started to occur? My body issue, my pain started when I was nine years old. So when we were younger, it's hard to, to get, you know, what was going on then? But if I look at my life, my sisters were leaving home. I was living alone with my parents. I was probably taking on the stress of them. There's this incredible book. I've suggested it here. Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. She talks about the mind-body connection in depth. And what I understand now about backs, if anyone has any back issues here, we all seem to get them at some point in life is she talks about the different areas of the back. And if it's your lower spine, it's financial worries and issues you might be having. If it's your upper back, it changes. Now, I've had my entire spine, uh, I've had reconstructive spinal surgery. So what does that mean? Was I just unlucky? The truth about it is, is it's the thing that has propelled my life forward. It took me out for many years of my life, but it's now the love of my life. It's the conscious practice of healing it has now become my life's passion and my life's work to share how I did this with others. But how it started at nine years old was I was taking on the burdens of the family. My two sisters left the house and it was just me and whatever else was going on. So I want you guys to think about the smallest things, your homework, if you get a headache, instead of just running to go get Advil, just go, what was I just thinking? What was I feeling? What event just happened, right? That's your homework. So what if your body could give you a yes or a no really quickly? And we don't have time today to go through that meditation. It's actually a five minute meditation. And believe it or not, that meditation we did earlier, that's 10 minutes. That one I can do in two minutes. So that one is something, that's how I start my meditation. And I now do all of that in like two minutes. So when with practice, you're going to get really fast at those visualizations if you don't already do that already. And you are going to then get into the deeper stuff. So you can do that meditation before doing this. But this is what I want you to understand. The body gives us yeses and nos all the time. And I want you to understand what it feels like. So a yes, if we ask ourselves that statement, going back to that statement that we wrote earlier, this is your homework as well when you leave the workshop. You wrote a question um, when we were answering those four questions. You know, I use the example of, should I buy that new car? We put it in statement form and we check how the body feels. So I would say, I wanna buy that new car this month. And then I would notice how my body feels. 
A yes feels like a fluttery, fluttery, warm, tingly, pleasant sensation in the upper area of the body. I won't have sensations generally below the heart. That is not a higher vibration emotion. That is not a big yes. A no feels like an empty, heavy, negative sensation generally in our stomach. Now, this might be a little different for everybody, but I want you to also start paying attention to that sensation. So give yourself something easy. So start with easy statements as your homework, like my name is Mandara. Check for a yes. And then try a, an easy no, like I love mosquitoes. See what it feels like. So this is another homework assignment for you and become aware of what higher vibrational energy may feel like. Okay, we're gonna go for a break in a moment. And I'm just gonna talk a little bit about heart and mind coherence. So manifestation happens when we pair a clear intention with a higher vibrational emotion. In our meditation, we did the work of higher vibration emotions. So that's everything with gratitude, forgiveness, love, peace, joy, and lower vibration emotions are sadness, anger, jealousy, competition, etc. So the coherence of body, which is the heart, the heart rate, and the mind, the clear intentions we form, form a mind-body connection and therefore both our physiology and our brain chemistry changes when sustained over a period of time. So the longer you meditate, of course, the more you'll have this mind-body, heart-mind coherence happening, so the quicker you can manifest. You can't manifest things when you're ashamed, sad, lonely. This is not how we manifest. And this might be, you know, we've heard this before, but what does it feel like? If you can recall, even if it was just a little bit from the meditation we did earlier, what did it feel like to be in gratitude? What did it feel like to just be a little more relaxed? That is the state we need to be in. And in fact, a girlfriend of mine who's a healer has, I don't know if she's proven it, but she says that an orgasm is a great way <laughs> to manifest because you're in a great place. So maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but if you can imagine higher energy, anything that gives us joy from that place, we can manifest. So back to the seven principles. And again, we are going to, um, we're going to go through them. We'll talk about how leadership applies, of course, how you can unpack these principles, but we are going to do some of these, what they call brain hacks. I haven't decided if I like the word brain hacks or not hacking something. I don't know, but that's what they call them. Okay. So you wouldn't buy an airplane ticket without knowing where it was going first, would you? Now this is going back to setting intention. But of course, now I have to say with COVID, I might just get on any damn plane and just go anywhere. I mean, I know that there could be bad, who knows what, when I get there, but I just want to go on an adventure, I have to say. So before the break, we learned that a clear intention coupled with a higher vibrational emotion helps manifest the change we want to see in our lives. So we practice setting intention for creating space to connect with higher self. But right now, I want to unpack what we need to do when we set intention for manifesting even more specific things that we desire, such as more clients, a new romantic partner, the perfect house, etc. Setting clear intention allows the universe to clearly understand what it is you want so that it can help you manifest it. So you want to make sure that the intention you are setting is aligned with your authentic self. So many times we wind up getting something we thought we wanted only to figure out it wasn't what we wanted at all. Can I see you all nod? Because you know this, right? In your being. Now, why does that keep happening? Because we're setting our intentions with our thinking minds. And our thinking minds are not authentic. Our thinking minds are conditioned. We make this mistake. I make this mistake again and again, because we always think it's faster to use our thinking minds. When in fact, if we just even just did this, took a few breaths in and then made a, a choice, it would be more conscious. So I believe the universe wants us to be abundant and is always trying to help us course correct, which is why we sometimes get hints given to us by our body, like I was saying earlier. We're always being told when we're going the wrong way. And by wrong, I simply mean, we're gonna take a longer route to get where we're meant to go. I believe in destiny. Don't have to follow me on that one. That's my path. But I believe we're gonna get there anyway. It's just how we get there. So with our meditation practice, we can do two things to ensure our desires and intentions are soul aligned and authentic. 
So one, we check in with our higher self first to see what we truly desire before setting the intention. So we set our intention to connect to higher self, but we stop there. And then from that place, we connect with higher self and figure out what it is we truly desire. But if we already set an intention and we've been diligently praying for it to manifest, we stay open to receiving any guidance from our higher self because our higher self may be suggesting what needs reassessment. Maybe we need to re-clarify our original intention. We will be getting signs. Mm. So where attention and intention goes, energy flows. That's it. it was, um... So according to quantum science, all right, all human beings hmm. emit magnetic energy. Magnetic energy emits a frequency. A frequency carries information such as intention, thoughts, right? And frequencies influence the people and surrounding environment that they come into contact with. So you've probably seen this before, but you imagine yourself right here and you've got a magnetic energy field right around you. All of us do. And this is where our thoughts and intentions are kind of being like electrically held in. It's like there's a gravitational force this way, okay? Now we can expand our energy, but we always have this magnetic energy there. And within that energy, there's frequencies being sent out. So we emit frequencies all the time and like honing beacons, this is how we attract our friends, our lovers, our employees, and so on. So like attracts like. Let's look at what it means to use higher conscious leadership through this lens. An important decision we must come to understand is what the difference is between creating and manifesting what we desire from the material plane versus creating and manifesting what we desire from the quantum field. So yes, what we are saying is, according to quantum science, we can manifest from both. However, by now, I believe you know what I'm going to say, manifesting from the quantum field is faster and more authentic. So here's an example from when I was working as a manager for the school district. So I was running a, an adult vocational school for 3000 students, and it was my job to hire instructors for the many programs we had. Within a two year period, I fired three instructors. No matter what I did, no matter what kind of advertisements I put out there, I kept getting the same kind of person. So I had set an intention to attract a more qualified instructor for the position. However, I kept getting everything wrong. So what mistakes was I making? Number one, mistake number one, the energy surrounding the situation was not high vibrational anymore. It had now become the energy of doubt, fear, anxiety, pressure, concern for the students and my job. I was emitting a negative low vibrational frequency. Mistake number two, I was attempting to solve the problem on the same energetic level as the problem itself. Remember Einstein. And mistake number three, I did not clear space to connect with my higher self first. I didn't do it. And I didn't check in with what it was I truly desired, what would be truly beneficial for the school, and what exactly was the best intention I needed to be setting. So the difference between creating and manifesting from the material 3D plane versus creating and manifesting from the quantum field is the same difference between creating from the known, which is our three-dimensional time and space reality, and the unknown, the limitless possibility of the quantum field. If you create from the known, you're only gonna get more of what you already know and have. That's why I was in a loop. I was in a loop. <laughs> So if you create from the known, you're gonna get more of what you already have. So here's what I needed to do. Number one, breathe and come into higher vibrational motion. I needed to sit my ass down in my office, which I was there 12 hours a day. Remember those days in the office, right? I need to get myself into a higher vibrational motion first. Two, connect with the quantum field. So by breathing, I was going to pull my thinking mind out of my body, connect with the quantum field using all those visualization techniques we did and allow myself space and time to integrate with the wisdom I receive. Reframe, refine and reclarify my intention with the universe because I had already set something in motion. But by doing that work at at least at any point in time, I can always re-clarify with the universe. And if you re-clarify with a higher vibrational motion than the one you set it with, you're, you're golden. 
So because I did not create space in my life to meditate on the perceived problem until I did, I kept hitting my head against a wall for years. Eventually, I checked in with myself and figured out the following. We'll see if you find this interesting. So once I checked in with myself, the instructor, I realized, was not the problem. The program was the problem. It was attracting the wrong instructors because it needed an overhaul. Eventually, the program was adapted and changed and therefore attracted different students and instructors. Number two, I figured out that the job I had of creating vocational programming was no longer soul aligned for me. I actually wasn't meant to be there anymore, which is why I was creating that problem. It wasn't giving me joy. I was meant to create programs like this one and go out there and do the work I was passionate about. I love educating people. I love speaking about everything I'm speaking about today. And therefore I know I'm gonna succeed until my higher self comes a knocking and says, go this way. <laughs> so discover the truth and the resistance disappears. You see, there's always something deeper going on under the surface of things. Often when truth wants to surface, we experience resistance in all kinds of ways. However, when we discover the truth, the resistance disappears. And amazingly, I, I hit rock bottom with my spine. I thought there's no way I will ever heal. I had the most traumatic spine, reconstruct complete head to toe twice. And then I had a kid and my back went out again and it kept going. And then suddenly I let go of emotional pain and trauma and limiting beliefs. And I let go of resisting. I let go of resisting having a back injury. In fact, I let go of resisting having to do the work having to sit down and start from the beginning in a sense, I had to let go of all of that. So maybe you can relate to that. And when I did, magic began happening. I love this line, which brings us to principle number two, which is breathing. As newborns, we enter the world by inhaling and when we leave this world, we exhale. It's beautiful. So in the 1900s, German psychiatrist Johann Heinrich Schultz developed an autogenic training, which is when you tell yourself to relax in combination with deep, slow breathing. So exactly what I was doing for you today. I was telling you to relax. You did deep breathing. But centuries ago, pranayama yoga, which means breath retention yoga, was the first doctrine to build a theory around respiratory control, suggesting that controlled breathing was a way to increase longevity, in other words, health. So for centuries, breathing has been known to support health. I don't know about you, but when I look at, if I hear these ancient scripts and texts, it almost feels like way outside myself. Like, oh, okay, or yeah, we've heard it a million times. Literally, we have the power to heal ourselves with our breath. Like our breath may be alone. Our breath might be the most powerful thing. So how did the breathing during our meditation make you feel? Um, can you unmute yourselves just for a moment? We don't need to do thumbs up. And we could put it in the chat if you prefer, but I feel we could just talk. Um, how did it make you feel? Just the breathing. Does anyone want to give me any feedback? I do breathing consistently and I have done it for, um, I won't say because it's older than you. <laughs> I'm so impressed. That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, I learned that from a yoga instructor Yeah. when I was in my 20s. So. Um, incredible. So you're, so you're a pro. So how does breathing affect you and change your life? How it calms it me. I'm a very calm type of person. I mean, you can insult me and you think I'm mad and I just slide. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You have awesome shields too. Yeah. So the breathing, yeah. Um, calms you. And like I, I, I understand it to be now it's connecting us with a different part of our mind. So we no longer are trapped by our identities in the three-dimensional reality we're in, right? And those are big words, okay. a big way of saying it, but really it just kind of connects you somewhere yeah. else. I'm going to pass the mic to Janice or whoever yeah. wants to. Anyone else want to share? More centered. More centered, yep. Right, Who, no one can complain here, about. Here. More present. More present. So I definitely breathe very shallow until I do some conscious breathing and almost re reset it. Yeah, so you notice that you've got some shallow breathing, right? Yeah. No, that's the way it, that's the way we, we all, we, 
throughout our day, we are breathing shallow breaths, thinking shallow thoughts <laughs> until we center. So thank you for sharing. I love this line. Breathing is the bridge between the, in, the visible and the invisible. So in going back to the nervous system, which we were speaking about earlier, breathing is what connects our nervous systems, our bodies to our higher selves. And yes, breathing pulls our mind out, changes our energy, changes our, and if we change our energy, we change the body. According to the Lung Association, conscious breathing helps with acute and chronic anxiety, sleep health, overall brain health. It improves your immune system and reduces inflammation. Okay, so as you breathe, how you breathe, the state of your breath reflects your internal state moment to moment. In other words, your breathing pattern changes as what you are thinking and feeling changes and vice versa. Actually, I'm gonna go back a slide here. So when, you're nervous, um, when you are nervous about speaking in public, this very much applies to us Toastmasters, your breathing pattern may become shallow. We just talked about that. However, when you ground your energy and you get into the groove of your speech, you notice that suddenly your breathing pattern evens out. So we know our metabolic functions also affected by our internal states, such as blood pressure, heart, our heart rate and hormones, our whole bodies are connected in this holistic approach. So all of this is affected by our thoughts. As a byproduct, when you are able to breathe consciously and controlled, you can also become conscious of whatever is present in any given situation. Controlled breathing also enables you to have better influence over your internal state of being and how you are thinking, feeling, behaving, reacting. So obviously as leaders, if, we're, if we take a moment, we're having that moment where we could overreact or we could lose our cool. Just like Uria, Uri, 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 Uri said on the call today, that it just washes over her. She takes a breath in and it washes over her. That is the key to being a higher conscious leader. So how is that happening? Because when we become conscious of our breathing, we become conscious, we can become conscious of everything around us which is what we practice in our meditation today. And of course, the more you practice this, the more you can become conscious of your surroundings. All right, so before I get into principle number three, which is visualization, I wanna first explain the very important concept, very important concept of grounding and connecting to light, which is what we are practicing. As above, so below, our imaginations are a powerful tool. I've been taking many healing courses, a lot of them over this year from COVID. I amped up my game and took a lot more. And what I've noticed with every course I take is we were always using our imaginations. Now, I have a fine art degree, so I understand the joy that using my imagination gives us. And imagination isn't just art, it's science, philosophy, it's everything. But this is where that if you can see it in your mind, you can create it comes from. And this is why as kids, we, we, the first thing we do is we hone our imagination and we play with it. And, and this is so much more powerful than I realized because when I started to help others heal, not just myself, and I realized that I could do this with my imagination, that I can do it long distance, you know, a session over Zoom and help someone heal. Like, how is that possible? Because if I can see it, I can create it. So... The best visual for this concept of so, uh, as above, so below is this. So we're connected to our higher selves. We connect by, by seeing it as light. It made it a nice, easy way to see it. And light, of course, is a very healing tool because it supposedly vibrates at the same level as love. And love is very healing. And when we ground, we need to ground our energy. Why? Because that is the, Earth's energy is a supportive place. Think of a rock and water. So we need the fluid, fluidity, the quality of higher self, but we also need to carry out this work in our lives. And to do that, that's three-dimensional time, space, and reality. So the best visual for this concept is this one. <laughs> so imagine swimming, not being able to touch the bottom and trying to push a boat. Okay, so you're swimming in the water and try that like this. Imagine this boat wasn't on the shore, but it was in the water and you're swimming. You'd have to like push it slowly. But if you're standing on the shoreline with your feet grounded and you can give it a good shove with the water support, it's the combination that gives you like that leverage to get the boat nice and far, okay? So it's really important that we have both. In fact, 
what happened to me is I was doing my conscious healing practice in the beginning, again, like 11, 12 years ago. I discovered it intuitively in the middle of the night while meditating. I suddenly connected with my higher self and felt guided. And I did this work for about a month, but I sometimes hurt myself. I got into a position bending over doing whatever and it hurt. So I spoke to a healer and she explained to me the principle of grounding energy. So we can connect all we want up here in the higher chakra, the crown chakra. But if we're not connected to the base of our spine, if we're not connected to our root, then, you know, it's like floating away and it's not connected. The mind body connection isn't happening. So once I grounded, I was able to heal myself and you can too. All right, so principle number three as leaders it is important to have vision. Our aim is to provide clear direction that inspires our team to move forward positively. A great way to do this is when we get the team to envision or visualize achieving the same goal at hand. Because one, if we can see it, we can believe it. And two, if we can believe it, we can create it. So as Napoleon Hill said in his book, Think and Grow Rich, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. That was 1937. I know that I just couldn't believe that was 1937. It was so clear. It's such a catchy, you know, just like something out of marketing today. I like this too. Jim Carrey in an interview discussed how he would visualize all the things he wanted coming to him while he was broken down on his luck. And he actually wrote himself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered. And within Three years, he made the hit Dumb and Dumber, and he became a millionaire. I love that story because it's so simple. We, we, we hear these stories, but try it. But the best way to show you the power of visualization is to do it ourselves. So we're going to do it today. Now, I would like you all, if you're not standing, to stand. Humor me and stand up. It's going to feel good on the body, and this is going to make way more sense if we stand. Okay, so I'm going to rise with my... You can just tilt your... Um, your computer up, your screen up. If you can't see, if we can't see you, but you can see yourself, that works. That's fine. Okay, everybody up. Whew. All right, feels good. <laughs> Everyone give me the thumbs up when they're ready. I'll give everybody a moment. We'll just dance it out because I like to dance it out. <laughs> so I, I need the music at this point, right? I should put on like some techno music next time or something <laughs> for this scene <laughs> or any kind of music, I don't know. All right, okay. So facing me, feet, your hips square, facing me, feet on the ground. I want you to all point your right arm out and see you're gonna point your finger, okay? Now I'd like everyone to as com comfortably, you know, do what you do. Try to keep your feet both on the floor. Don't kind of move your feet. And I want you to spin around to your right as far as you feel like you can go and notice what you're pointing at. Hold it there for a moment, get a sense of what you're pointing at and come back to center. Get a reference point. Awesome. All right, now I want everyone to close their eyes. Hold on to something if you're like me and you can get dizzy. <laughs> Great. Now I want you to visualize doing the same thing as you just did. See yourself in your mind's eye, holding out your arm, pointing your finger, going to the right. And I want you to see yourself going to that point where you saw your on the wall or pointing to whatever object you noted. And now in your mind, go past that object, past that point you noticed, keep going further and twisting your body right around in your mind. Twist like an owl, you're now becoming like an owl. Twist, twist, twist all the way to the front. How far can you go? Can you go around and around and around? Can you go around five times, 10 times? See it in your mind. Awesome job. Now take a deep breath in, open your eyes. Let it out. Awesome. Now everybody do it again. I want you to put out your hand, finger, point, and I want you to go around. Keep going to as far as you can go now, far as you can go. Nice job. Did everybody go further this time? Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you went further. Yeah, did you go quite a bit further? Like thumbs up if you went quite a bit further. Yeah. Okay, so this is the power of visualization. When 
you see it in your mind, it makes it so much easier to do it the second time. How much easier was it to do the second time, right? Okay, so while I still have you standing, we understand that visualization is powerful. We're gonna do, I want you to stay seated. I'm gonna, I mean, stay standing, sorry. I'm gonna sit for a moment. Stretch it out while you do, we're about to do our next hack. But first I'm gonna tell you a little about gratitude. So we know that gratitude is a higher vibrational emotion because it's a higher frequency, right? And science has proven that it's actually impossible to produce unhealthy stress chemicals like adrenaline or cortisol when we are smiling. So gratitude is important for us leaders because when we are grateful, we smile. I want you to understand the difference between what you're about to do when you're standing and what we can do in our chairs here is when we're working at the computer table, we're like hunched in and caved in. So our, our brains don't understand, they produce chemicals based on our emotional expressions and our body positions. So when we are hunched in at our desk, even if we aren't sad, our brain starts producing sad chemicals in our body. Okay, it starts producing adrenaline and cortisol. But when we smile at our desks while we're working, if we can do that, even if we're not happy, we will eventually get into a happy mood because we, our brain will start producing the chemicals um, like norepinephrine and um, you know everything that's positive, oxytocin, et cetera, et cetera. So while I have you standing, we're going to be like an owl, which we did, and we're going to power pose. So I want everyone here to put their hands on their hips and smile a big smile. If you're not comfy smiling with your teeth, that's okay. You can smile with your mouth closed. The stranger you look, the better, because you are going to produce the endorphins in your body right now to elevate your mood really quickly. You don't even have to meditate, you can do this. And while you do, we're gonna time it for two minutes. I'm gonna tell you a story. Okay. So I'm kind of excited to tell you this story because I wrote this story down, um, of course, in preparation for this workshop, but it just happened again right before the workshop, literally. I was out, you know, taking a walk on a gray day because I hated, you know, working that day. I just didn't want to be in the office. And I remembered to do this. I wasn't even feeling good walking. So I was feeling that angry at myself, sad, whatnot. So I power posed as I was walking. So I was smiling like this and walking. <laughs> And then out of nowhere, I started thinking of a music concert. Imagine those, remember those back in the day before COVID. And then I thought of another happy moment in my life and I started to feel gratitude and I started you know, rewiring my brain because what fires together, wires together. So when we have a happy emotion and then, we, and then in the present moment have another one, our brain automatically connects us back to that other happy emotion. And this is, we create this beautiful loop this neural net loop of positivity in our lives. So the happier we are, the more happy we'll be in our lives. And as my physiology changed and my body and brain chemistry changed, suddenly the sun came out and a hummingbird appeared right in front of me. And now I'm power posing smiling and I realize, oh my God, everyone's walking past me. They must think I'm a total freak. But before I could give myself those down shameful said, silly chemical cocktails in my body, the most beautiful thing happened. Like attracts like. And suddenly everybody was smiling back at me. Everybody was beaming and smiling like I'd never felt and experienced before. And what I wanted to share today was that just before this workshop, I went out into the woods to ground my energy. And I went to the middle of the woods where nobody was. And then I remembered to power pose. I thought, well, if I'm gonna teach this, I better do it. So I power posed. And in the middle of the woods, a hummingbird appeared out of nowhere and just hovered in front of me right before this, before I came back. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. It was just such a beautiful gift. And so what's happening inside us is reflected outside of us in the world. All right. So good job, everybody. Have a seat. So I want you to understand that you can power pose standing as you did, and you can power pose when you're seated. So both works, but the standing definitely gets it going through your body way more. Now I wanted to notice if anybody was resisting that a little bit. 
Because what's interesting about life is we can, when we feel silly, we resist things. And then that's what, that's the chemical that's released in our bodies. So I want you, if that ever happens, you can immediately switch your brain and just smile. That's as simple as it. You're having a shitty thought, then smile. And it actually literally will change your brain chemistry. I know it sounds simple, but the point is, is simplicity works. All right, moving along. There's the hummingbird. I mean, I literally couldn't have planned it better. <laughs> okay, trust. Leaders do not know it all, do not need to know it all, and do not get into positions of leadership by pretending to either. So how many people here have ever had a know-it-all lead them before, right? We know those micromanagers, they know best. They're not only demotivating and unrewarding, it's kind of soul-sucking energy, right? So coming from a place of intuitive knowing versus know-it-allism is key. So when I use the word know, because as higher conscious leaders, we actually get to know. We know, and when I'm saying no, I mean we're trusting the knowing from our higher wisdom. So here are some quotes. Intuition is not a single way of knowing. It's our ability to hold space for uncertainty and our willingness to trust the many ways we've developed knowledge and insight, including instinct, experience, faith, and reason. It's Brene Brown. Sometimes decisions or ideas that are sure to seem insane or sure to infuriate everyone around you are necessary to bring about change or move the world forward. Being able to make those calls based on the intuitive belief that they're right is one of the hallmarks of a great leader. So we know that Steve Jobs, Richard Branson and Oprah, they all follow their intuition and here are some quotes by them. I love Oprah's. I've trusted the still small voice of intuition my entire life. And the only time I've made mistakes is when I didn't listen. So I love this story. I just wanted to tell you quickly as well. So there's a man named Bill Allen. He was a CEO of Boeing in the 1950s. And when the company was strictly making plans for the defense industry, Allen had a crazy intuitive idea. He would build his own commercial jet that would serve what he was sure would soon be a booming industry called civilian air travel. So he bet the future of Boeing and convinced his board to risk $16 million in the 1950s on a new transcontinental airliner, the 707. The move transformed Boeing and air travel. So without his intuitive knowledge, we wouldn't be traveling today. I mean, it's just, it's brilliant. All right. So it's pre is precisely because it comes so naturally to me that I missed it. I was looking for something more outrageous, a fanfare of guidance, a physical angel sitting on my couch. But once I accepted and trusted that intuition is a natural breathing, as breathing, my journey with intuition expanded and grew and the whispers of intuition became louder. So what is the difference between higher self-wisdom and the ego? So over time, you'll come to develop an understanding of what higher self sounds like. We went over it a little bit, the supportive, loving voice. It's the opposite of ego, where we say things like, that won't be right, that's stupid, you always mess up, you'll never make it. It's important to note both your higher self and your ego speak to you in your own voice, in your mind, in your higher mind, in your, in your, in your head. I mean, a lot of people are expecting an angel to sit on the couch. And though many of you, maybe, maybe some of you have had that experience. I am jealous if you have, um, it really is just as natural as breathing. So if after you get into your car, you hear in your mind, you know, you've forgotten your keys and you hear, man, I'm an idiot. I should have remembered my keys or my umbrella. That is your ego. You need to squash that one. And if before you leave the house, a small voice reminds you, take an umbrella, it's going to rain today. That is higher self helping to take care of you. So another part of your homework, begin to observe how you yourself talk to yourself on a daily basis. Note the difference between tone and language that you use to talk to yourself. You don't love yourself. Who's going to love you as they say? Well, I think you can still be loved, but you're worth saying wonderful things to, and your higher self only has good things to say. So if you're meditating and you start to hear any negativity that is not your higher consciousness, you need to recenter 
with your breathing and let that energy go. You just breathe it out. Okay, so let's talk about forgiveness. We're going through the last few slides here and we should be ending right on time. So forgiveness. Forgiveness was a big part of my healing journey and it will be for you as well. Forgiveness creates space within to heal, know truth, envision new possibilities and lead. Without forgiveness, there is no space at all. And first and foremost, we need to forgive ourselves. So here's the science that Joe Dispenza had to say about forgiveness. In a sense, by disengaging from the thoughts and emotions of the past and returning to the present moment, you begin breaking the energetic bond to that person, problem, or painful experience. When you do this enough times, you're no longer ruled by the negative emotions because you've moved your attention off of them. By no longer feeling those emotions, you will naturally stop thinking about them. That's forgiveness. It's fair to say that that it's fair to say then that true forgiveness is breaking the emotional charge and energetic bond to our painful past, whatever that may be. What you've left with, what you're left with instead is a memory and a memory without the emotional charge is called wisdom. Think about that line. A memory without the emotional charge is called wisdom because we learn from every experience, good or bad, whoever is brought into our life or taken away. So we're now at the final principle, never assume. This is my favorite because learning the lesson of never assume can be a hard lesson. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you made an assumption that turned out to be horribly wrong and it cost you time, money, a relationship, a job, your health? For me, this happened in many ways, but in this example, it was my back. So my practice goes way beyond the mat. Oh, that's the uh-oh part, <laughs> never assume. So my practice goes way beyond the mat. I had been going to, uh, I was taking personal yoga classes and then the, te you know, the teacher always tells you, like gives you the same set of poses and do this on your left and now do this on your right. And they tell you to go your own pace. But it's really hard to go your own pace when you're in a class with other people. I mean, thankfully, it's a little easier on, on, these, on these Zoom calls now. But trying to get centered with yourself while someone else is talking at you to tell you to do something, it's nearly impossible. So how do you trust and listen to your own voice when someone else is talking? The thing we have to practice is never assuming that just because someone says something, just because a wellness coach says you should do it, that you should do it, including everything I've said here today. You need to come up with know what this feels like and trust this, feel trust to continue the work. So you limit your higher consciousness to show you the next right step if you think or assume you know what will come from doing something you thought or assumed would be right. I hurt myself every time I went to a yoga class. I learned the moves, I understood the sequences, but I kept hurting myself which is why I ended up getting on my own chair at the time. Now I can be on a mat, but initially I couldn't lie down to do yoga. I just sat. I couldn't even bend and touch my knees when I began my practice without hurting myself. And now I'm <laughs> like this woman. And I go way, way beyond the mat with my practice. So today I only do yoga when I'm in a meditative, meditative state first. I don't just jump into it. I meditate at least a few minutes, if not my 10, 15. My yoga practice is radical. In fact, I do not rely on a set of systematic poses or routines. Every yoga session is unique. I trust my intuition to guide me into poses and postures that are aligned for me. I trust my intuition. In fact, I will close my eyes, meditate, and then get a sense of where I should move. Sometimes my neck just starts moving and then my body, and then I grab the back of the chair. And then I suddenly grab like a piece of material that just happens to be around and I shove it where it needs to be shoved. I do not have to set up my world perfectly to do this. I can do it anywhere in the world at any time. I do not even need a mat. What I, under, what I have with me is my higher conscious self, my connection with my breath and my nervous system. And I trust that I will be intuitively guided because my higher self knows what's around me more so than my thinking mind knows. Think about like Sherlock Holmes, right? We're that open. And so when I'm doing my practice, I, I just know that, you know, I'm going to breathe. Oh, I need to bend forward now. Oh, look at that. There's a perfect handle there on this door that I happen to be near to hold on to, to get a deeper stretch. This is how I am now. And I take this philosophy and I want you to try this too over time. 
When you develop a practice, you develop a philosophy for living. And so I have more confidence and more trust and faith in myself because wherever I am, I can, I can create the tools. I can discover and intuit and know the tools that are around me because my higher conscious knows and I will know what to do. I don't need to have all the answers. I am not a know-it-all. <laughs> not a know-it-all at all. All right, so higher conscious leaders allow themselves to be led by their higher consciousness. And today I'm showing you, um, well, this is what we, we, we covered today, a list of what we covered. Higher consciousness, yeah, oops, sorry, leadership. Body, mind, body connection, creating space within, coherent heart, heart, and coherent mind, magnetic energy and frequency, grounding light, our brain hacks, and the seven steps and our meditation. We're not going to be doing a, we, well, we could do a breakout session. We're not going to do a breakout session today. I decided to let that be, but we will have a Q&A and we can just talk a little bit about what we each took away. I'm gonna ask each of you to just speak for one minute or last 30 seconds about what you got from today. And just remember that today I'm showing you the door and that it's up to you to walk through it. And as you continue to do your meditative practice, I want you to think about these three suggestions I've got for you. And I, I know a lot of you have, have been doing this, which is great. So if you want me to email your recording of the meditation I did today, my email's there. I want you to create a space in your world to do this meditation. If you haven't been doing it for a while, you've forgotten to do it, create a space again, just a certain corner of a chair, you know, chair in a corner, whatnot. Something that you love, something that feels right, that looks pretty and create it. Um, yeah, and put it in your schedule and commit to it. And if you commit to it, you'll do this work. And I'd like, I love this line, which is many of us say, yeah, one day, one day I'll do it. But how about if today became day one? So today you did a meditation and you can continue on with this practice from now on. I can see you in my mind and I will only give you um, wisdom that you share with me that I see in your higher conscious mind. That's it. So it's not coming from me. The wisdom isn't coming from me. It's coming from yourself. And that's the easiest way I can describe it. <laughs> so if that is interest to you, then please do get in touch with me. And I, I kid you not, we all have this ability. I am, I have my talents, but if you do this work over time, you will develop better and better intuitive skills. And you can not just heal yourself. Some people like to heal animals or, or just see a stranger on the street and wanna give them a hug because they know, well, not anymore with darn COVID, but you know what I'm saying. When you know when someone's down, you just know it. So this work is really powerful. Thank you, I've got the red card. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for watching this video on the Toastmasters District 96 YouTube channel. Subscribe to our channel to watch replays of our volunteer run workshops, contests, and other events that are happening in our district. Like this video to show your appreciation for the volunteers who work hard to run these events. And remember, we are all volunteers. Thank you.